If you're afraid of using social media, I've got good news. Help is here. You're a voice actor. You're an entrepreneur. You're a VOPreneur. Welcome to the Everyday VOPreneur Podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by Vocation Cancun. Vocation Conference is heading to Mexico. They want you to be there. It's happening February 9th to the 12th, 2023. You'll have an opportunity to stay at the gorgeous, all-inclusive Moon Palace Resort and learn about the business of the voiceover business. To find out more, visit vocationconference.com. Hi, I'm Karen Gilfrey, co-chair of the Vocation Conference. And this year, we're all heading down to Cancun. Vocation is the only conference completely dedicated to the business side of voice acting. You'll learn all about running your voiceover business like a pro with experts like Dave Finoy, Maria Pendolino, Tracy Lindley, Tina Marasco, and so many more. And the best part? Vocation Cancun takes place at Moon Palace Cancun, a top-rated, all-inclusive resort. We hope you'll join us and take your business to the next level. For more info, visit vocationconference.com. The VOPreneur Podcast. Hey, it doesn't suck. Not as funny as Conan. Not as cute as Seth Meyers. Not as smart as Colbert. But he's one of us, and that counts for something. Here's Mark Scott, the original everyday VOPreneur. Hello and welcome to the Everyday VOPreneur Podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. I'm Mark Scott, the original everyday VOPreneur back with some more actionable, practical advice that you can use to grow your voiceover business. Now, just before we get into this week's episode, I want to let you know about a new resource that I've created. This is a free download that's available to you, and I think it's relevant based on what we're talking about today. If you struggle to come up with ideas for social media, for video in particular, using Instagram Reels, TikTok videos, I've created a new free download that's going to give you 20 different ideas meant to spark your creativity. I know this is going to be helpful to you, and you can download it at markscottcoaching.com forward slash 20 video ideas. So we know that social media can be a really big, important part of our overall marketing strategy, but if we fear it, then we're probably not using it. We're going to get over that fear today. I feel confident about that. So we all know that we should be using social media as a tool for marketing our voiceover businesses, but Sometimes that's easier said than done, and for many, the idea of using social media is intimidating, it's overwhelming, or it's even fear-inducing. What to post, how often to post, what if people judge us, what if I post the wrong thing, say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing? Well, when you're afraid, the natural thing to do is to call in a hero to help you, and that's exactly what I've done This VO superhero comes with a 25-year background in acting. She's saved the voiceover day for clients ranging from Amazon Web Services to Nintendo Switch to VaynerMedia, which, by the way, adds huge cool points in my book. Uh, Welcome to the show, Bonnie Marie Williams. Hey, Mark. Thank you so much for having me in that intro. I need that. You know, I just need you to record that for me and I'll play it on my bad days. There you go. Just just that little extra boost to remind you. It really was. Thank you. So... The, the most important question, probably of the entire podcast, are you best friends with Gary V now that you've done voiceover for VaynerMedia? Like, do you have him on speed dial? Does he have you on speed dial? Not yet. And you would think because I've played him as an eight-year-old child that I would, but not yet. But one day, one day. For those that, that don't know, now you will know. Like Gary V, literally, when I was starting out my voiceover journey... And recognizing that I couldn't rely exclusively on casting sites and I needed to come up with another plan. The very first marketing book or anything that I ever read was actually Crush It by Gary V. And I became a, a very devoted follower of Gary V and continued to read his books, listen to his podcasts, watch his videos, follow him on social media. Like he is, he's pretty much the man when it comes to all this social media marketing stuff. Yeah, he's the marketing man. He's a he's just a shot of espresso when you listen to him. Yeah. He's great. So let's start with the origin story. If I'm the original everyday VOpreneur, you are the original VO superhero, uh, yes. perhaps imitated but never duplicated. How did you land on your brand? Ooh, okay. So we're about to get real. We just started, but we're going to get real. So... <laughs> I have I have a few of my booth buddies in here that are I have my Wonder Woman, Supergirl and Batgirl. I was raised on the very interesting combination of musical theater, comic books and the space program. 
Those were all like very important, pivotal things in my upbringing. And when I didn't want to be an astronaut when I was little, I wanted to be a superhero. That was, I mean, I was almost named after Clark Kent had I been born a boy. Like that was drilled into me. It's real. It's real. Although I am team Batman, but I do, I do love Superman. But that was what I was raised on. And I read Celia Siegel's book years ago on branding. Mm -hmm. And I really thought about it. And I, I, it just kind of hit me. And the more I thought about it, the more I looked at what do superheroes represent? And it's especially meaningful for me because that's what I was raised with and raised on. And my dad, who's no longer around, was the one who gave me that love of superheroes. And it's not just it's not about them being self-serving. It's about what they can do for other people. And they all have their flaws. They can't do everything, but they're great at what they do. And when they work together and they embrace each other's strengths and their differences, and that's when they really, really save the day and they do something powerful and amazing. And it's that idea of collaboration. And so it was all of these things that I said, you know, I believe I'm a team player. I love being a problem solver. And the idea of really a lot of my brand was also inspired by Batgirl, right? And Mm -hmm. we're going, we're talking Yvonne Craig Batgirl because Batman was one of my first words when I was little. But the (laughs) idea of coming into a male dominated industry and being a girl and saying, you know what? I can do it too. And I'm going to do it my way. These were all these things that inspired it. And it, it just felt right when I did it. And I rebranded in January of 2018 and I looked and I said nobody else has done this and it felt right like I knew it was mine Mm -hmm. like when you see it and you just you know yeah and it's I know I can't do everything as much as we all want to but I know I can do a lot of cool things and I can really only do them when I do it together with somebody else I can't just be a voice actor on my own you got to have clients you got to have a network you have to have a support group but being that problem solver and being that person that maybe I can't provide the solution myself. I can't be the one to save the day and stop Metropolis from burning down, but I can bring in a guy who can. I can bring in somebody who can and help my clients help them solve that problem that way. Listening to you explain it that way, I mean, it it makes total sense. It's like, wow, it is kind of surprising that nobody else had previously thought of that. But watching you tell that story, I can also see how deeply you connect with that like that's a very personal thing for you you can i can sense that and that is the foundation of a great brand right is something that really connects with us on that level and becomes personal with us on that level so it, it's uh it's a good fit for you i i, I like that for you thank you <laughs> i appreciate that i don't get to talk about that a lot and it's not a self-serving thing it's not me saying you know i'm i can do everything like no it's really saying what can i do for you you know, who yeah, who is the, Batman the without story the people of Gotham? It. Yeah. Right on. I like it. Thank you. So once upon a time in the Vopreneur Facebook group, I posed a question. If you had to give a presentation on any subject without time to prepare, what subject would you present? And you said how not to fear social media. So I know this is probably a very broad question, but let's start here. What do you think it is specifically that most of us fear about social media? Being seen. Interesting. That is not what I would have thought you had said. Expand on that. Yeah. Being seen. Because I think especially now, so many people are afraid of, we want authenticity. We want it so badly. But we are on social media, sometimes in a sea of curated images and feeds, and a lot of things don't feel authentic. Authenticity is what we all want so badly, and yet it scares us. And we're afraid of being seen and being rejected, being seen and not being liked, not fitting in. And I think that is the biggest thing that stops people from getting on social media platforms, being truly seen, or stopping themselves from marketing at all. Because if I don't put myself out there, I can't get rejected. I can't get hurt. Mm -hmm. That is probably the root of it. Yeah. That is profound and and deep and psychological and... Nothing like what I expected, but at the same time, incredibly insightful, right? Most people, you would think the default would be, I fear it because I don't know what to say, or I fear it because I don't know how it works, or I don't understand the technology, or 
I don't have the, the best camera to create the best video or, or whatever. And I'm sure that all of that rings true for a lot of people, but on a deeper level, yeah, you're probably right. There's something to that, putting yourself out there, the, the, the rawness, the transparency, the vulnerability of putting yourself out there. That can be really intimidating as well. That's, that's really interesting. So we just discussed all these different things about social media, the tech, the presence, the, the risk that somebody's going to say something nasty or have a negative comment, this fear of being seen and being transparent and being vulnerable. What do we have to do to get past that then? Baby steps. <laughs> Baby steps and fighting that internal voice that says I'm not good enough or they won't like me. Um, imposter syndrome. I always recommend mm -hmm. therapy. I think everybody should go to therapy. I'm a big advocate for mental health and awareness. And I talk about that on my social media. And I think it's really at the end of the day, faking it until you make it sometimes and believing in yourself, because if you don't, who will? I'm sure, yeah. you know, your mom will or your brother will or your husband will or whoever, but you've got it. It starts with you. And I really think it's a day by day process and not every day. You're not going to feel super every day. And that's, yeah. I think, all, one thing with my brand is I have this brand I have to live up to. I got to be yeah. super, you know, yep. I got to I got to take off the glasses and, and, you know, put on the cape sometimes. And that is something that keeps me going. But it's it's really about taking baby steps and no, knowing that not every day you're going to feel like you're 100 percent. And there are some days where you are afraid. But isn't that isn't that what uh, my friend Mark Scott says is is do the thing, do the thing anyways, do the thing. Do anyway. the thing. Do the thing. Hmm. Do this the sounds thing. vaguely familiar. Hmm. You know, it's it's interesting though because I I think you're onto something with the fact that look, everybody, most people, let's say, do a really great job of presenting their best life on social media, which I don't want to say that's not authentic. Obviously, when we're having those those good times, when fun things are happening, when we book a great job, whatever, that is very real. But that's not the fully authentic picture of social media. We hide a lot of the other stuff that goes on. And sometimes we're not willing to talk about our struggles because, I mean, I guess probably in some senses, we feel like we're going to get judged on that side too, right? On one hand, people are judging you if life is going too great. On the other hand, they're judging you if you're, you know, being real and life isn't going good enough. So it makes for a very interesting situation when it comes to, to sharing on social media. But there is something to be said for being willing to be authentic and, and true. Yeah, because we are all uniquely us. There's nobody else like us. Like it, going back to what mm -hmm. you said earlier, you can imitate other people, but it doesn't mean you are that person. You can do your best to do, you know, I want to be this person when I grow up. But at the end of the day, you're still you. You have your unique experiences and your unique viewpoints. And being who you are, being yourself, that is your superpower. And that's what is going to help you connect on a personal level with other people. We are all, we're all people, you know, the people that we're afraid to talk to because it's this client, this somebody that could hire us. They're a person. They go to the yeah. bathroom. They maybe drink coffee. They, yep. you know, they have bad days. They have good days. But we are more than just our jobs and what we do. There's that human side to us. That's, it's our secret identity, if you will. We have these other parts of ourselves and that's, when you think about connecting with other people on that level, that's where you get the magic. That's where you get the sauce. That's that's the connection. And it's so scary, especially if anybody, If I mean, I got bullied relentlessly growing up for being a girl that liked Star Wars and comic books or right. being a girl that looked weird or her name rhymed with Barney, the purple dinosaur. I got that a lot when I was a kid. Or my name rhymed with everything. You know, <laughs> I got that a lot when I was a kid. But, you know, it's so scary to allow yourself to be seen. But that's how we make connections. And you think about people, we're all afraid of people not liking us. Even if people say, I don't care if people don't like me. No, that's not true. We do. Carrie Fisher, who I talk about a lot because she's one of my heroes and has been since I was a little girl is very A, open about mental health, but B, she even talks about how she doesn't want people to not like her, or she did talk about it. And yep. that's Princess freaking Leia. Yeah. 
And even she had that struggle of these people didn't like me and I just wanted to fit in. I just wanted them to love me or to like me. That's a universal thing. We are not immune to that by any means. And so when you think about it that way and you go, okay, if Carrie Fisher herself was afraid of rejection, maybe this isn't just a me thing or you can still go on to do amazing things with it. But it's that baby steps, just maybe posting one thing. And if it's something you don't feel like sharing, you don't have to. That's okay too. You don't have to tell us your life story that you maybe haven't told a therapist yet. That's okay. But putting something out there, maybe when you feel like you're called to, or you just feel like, you know, maybe somebody else out there could hear what I have to say today, because I know I need to hear it. And if I need to hear it, there's somebody else out there who's probably going through the same thing. Allowing yourself to be seen that way. There's absolutely something to that, because I think one of the reasons why I have been able to connect with people is because I talk about my struggles just as much as I talk about my successes, right? I, I'm not afraid to admit when I've had a bad week or a bad month or, you know, when a big job goes away and, and the struggle that comes with that. And, and you know, it's not that I'm dwelling on those things, but I'm sharing what I've been through in that instance and how I've worked to, to get over that. But that is part of what makes you genuine and authentic. And I mean, there's, there's this other thing, this guy, Mark Scott says that marketing is all about building relationships, right? And this is exactly what you're talking about. How do you build a genuine relationship with someone if you're not genuinely authentic about who you are and and how you present yourself. And so, you know, being willing to put yourself out there in that way, it does make a difference in how you are perceived, I think, on social media. Yeah, absolutely. And what I've always admired about you is you don't just post all the wins all the time. And you talk about the hard things and you build those relationships in your communities and you create those conversations and we all share and we go, I'm not alone. I lost that $10,000 job too. Okay, it's not just me. It's that feeling of, hey, my struggle, my pain is not just unique to just me because we always think nobody else understands how I feel. And while that's true, in some ways, nobody can replicate the exact experience you've been through. We all understand pain. We all understand loss. We all understand struggle. And it's Mm -hmm. that's where we, we realize we're not alone. In a giant world filled with people, we know we're not alone. But sometimes it feels like it when we're going through something really hard. We think nobody else understands. But when you connect on that level with somebody else who does understand, it's beautiful. And it's it's that human connection. And we all crave it now more than ever, especially post panini. I'm not going to say the word, but post panini. <laughs> you yes, know? and we're still I understand. in it. We're still in yes. it. But being so yep. isolated, we crave it now more than ever. And we're so connected to everybody but we still crave that connection even more on that deep level. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. And that, I mean, look, for two and a half years, for a lot of people, that was the only way that we were able to connect with people, which is why the the genuineness, the authenticity of it matters even more. So we, we, we understand that there's definitely a, a psychological component that goes into this, that there's an element of of mindset that goes into this, into overcoming the fear of, of putting yourself out there on these platforms. So let's talk a little bit about your social media strategy, because you do a, a good job of finding that balance. Your social media covers a, a broad range of, of topics and, and really the whole spectrum. So let's talk first about what platforms are you using And why did you choose those particular platforms? Okay, so I have the belief that everybody should have at least a presence on basically every social media platform when it comes to marketing ourselves. Um, I have a TikTok, but I haven't used it due to some of the security features. Um, uh, Some of my friends at work in high up security have said, "Mm, maybe Maybe be a little careful with that. I may get back into it. Um, Now that circumstances have changed, but I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. I have the TikTok. I haven't posted in a while, but I have that one. Those are the big ones that I can think of, the main main players. I have a Pinterest. I was using it recently to decorate my new apartment, but I was using it on a personal, not on my business one. But, you know. Pinterest is for recipes. Pinterest (laughs) is for recipes and for outfits and for. And there's a uh, lot of great recipes there. Let's just be clear. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's where I found my lazy girl lasagna hack, and I will never make it the same way again. 
That, that's where tonight's uh, slow cooker beef stew came from, was a, a Pinterest recipe. Ooh, okay, now we're talking, now we're talking. <laughs> Do you struggle with where to find voiceover work? With where to look for voiceover work? Do you struggle with trying to figure out who could benefit from using your voiceover services? I want you to know that I've put together a masterclass that I think is going to help you work through that problem. It's called 101 Ways to Find VO Leads, and in it, you're going to get exactly what is promised. Over 100 different places where you could potentially be marketing your voiceover business to create some incredible voiceover opportunities for yourself. You are going to be inspired after this masterclass, and I guarantee you it's going to spark some ideas of where your next voiceover opportunity might come from. You can get all the details for the masterclass, including getting instant access to watching it by visiting markscottcoaching.com. Look up 101 ways to find VO leads at markscottcoaching.com. Now back to our show. You've picked your platforms. Do you have specific strategies for each of the platforms? Because obviously each platform has its own uniqueness, right? Yeah. Although lately it feels like every one of them has morphed into just another video sharing platform. But, yes. but do you have a strategy? This is how I'm going to use Instagram. This is how I'm going to use whatever. I had a lot more of a rigid strategy up until about a year ago, I would say. And now it has become, it started to when I was really into it and I had every single thing planned I had I had a calendar, a spreadsheet of what I'm posting when, and it's color coded because either I'm type A or I'm a Virgo rising. You can interpret that how you will, but I am. Sounds like a Virgo thing. <laughs> As a Virgo. As yes. See, okay. See, that's how we're connecting. Yes. We're being very personal yes. right now. Uh, I had that, and that was really good for me to plan it all out in advance. And lately, with kind of the shifts in my personal life, I said, you know what? That is not, it's too stressful for me right now. So I'm just going to kind of take a step back and mentally just go, am I posting something that's providing entertainment? Am I posting something that's providing value? Am I posting something fun? And so I use them for different things. Like Twitter for me is, we'll just kind of go through how I use them. Um, yeah. And in what I'm doing now, Twitter is kind of where I post like a funny little one-off thought that I have. And that's a little bit more of like, what goes on inside of Bonnie's brain? Well, right here, here's these thoughts. And what I learned from Gary Vee was that you can take those tweets and repurpose them into other content for your Instagram and for all these things, which is amazing. If you can repurpose your yep. content without having to create new content, go for it. I think, I don't know if he still has it, but there's like a 100 different ways of repurposing your content out there that he created a few years ago and it's a gold mine if you can yeah. find it it's amazing but that's where i'll post you know i'll post something that i did if i find it out there but that's a great way to connect with other people as well um, you can connect with clients there of course you can connect with other talent that's a great way to share like hey i'm casting this thing and put that out there i've done that before yeah. But that's really like quick little snippets of like, oh, that's something kind of cool or something funny or something that's maybe inspirational that can help other people out there. So I'll post like little things there. And then with LinkedIn, I go on and I interact with other people's things a lot more than posting my own thing. That's what I've been doing a lot of. Or when something I've done, like the job I did for Pokemon came out, I said, I'm putting this on my LinkedIn because there's a bunch of other people that are going to appreciate this like I did. This is cool. Like yeah, this is sure. a yeah. dream come true for sixth grade Bonnie. So I yeah. posted that out there, but that's where, you know, I like to think of it as like, okay, I should put on pants and be an adult now and go on LinkedIn is the way I look at it. Like nobody's <laughs> telling us that we have to put on pants while we work, right? But for LinkedIn, I feel like you got to put at least some leggings on. That's where you go to put Something. on pants and yeah. go to work. Yeah. You yeah. can't go to work little, at LinkedIn. A little bit more professional. Yeah. Don't, don't roll up to LinkedIn looking like Winnie the Pooh with no pants on. <laughs> that's the way I looked at LinkedIn. And... Instagram is interesting now because it's evolving and they're saying, you know, we're still prioritizing pictures. They're not. No, they're not. They're not, not even slightly. They lie. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> they, they do. They, they lie. Do. <laughs> so they're becoming more video content, which is fine. Yeah. And, you know, that is, can be really fun. I like to post things where I'm lip syncing to something and I'll do something goofy. But typically when I post something voiceover related, that isn't necessarily work I've done, but like, hey, other voice actors understand this struggle. And I have clients who will comment and they go, yeah, me too. 
And it's that idea of, you know, just because it's a voice actor struggle doesn't mean that it's not something that our clients and the people who hire us also don't go through in their own way in their own businesses. So that has become really fun. And with that, I'll go through. It's really easy to get sucked in. And you'll just be looking at reels and you are you go, oh, my gosh, it's been 30 minutes. I was supposed to only do this for oh, five. Only 30 minutes? You're doing pretty good. You've got pretty good self-restraint compared to some other people. It's a conservative estimate. <laughs> I'm not trying to only make myself five hours look bad. later. <laughs> well, you know, four hey, what days happened to later. being authentic and transparent? I, okay, 30 <laughs> minutes on a good day. Maybe an hour and a half before bed. And then I go, oh, I got to be up in three hours. Dang, I should go to sleep. Uh, but those are fun because you can you can save the trending sounds and you can look at how other people are using the sounds. And, you know, it, it's very funny because I'll catch myself doing it. I'll look at reels and I won't like them, but I'll think they're funny and I'll bookmark mm -hmm. them. I'll save them. I'll save the video or I'll save the, the sound to use it later. But then I realize I don't like it. And then I get upset when people don't like my reels and I go, oh, I do the same thing. So maybe I shouldn't be mad. <laughs> like. <laughs> Man, is that my karma? I don't know. But uh, I, I do love that. how you've justified it, though. I spend 30 minutes going through my Instagram reels, but I do it for inspiration. It, it gives yeah. me ideas. Yeah. Right. But there is something to be said for that, because I admit I, I, I do the same thing. Sometimes the endless scroll, it gets you. But you see something that sticks and you're like, oh, I could do my take on that or I could do that. But from a voiceover perspective, maybe it was based on some other profession or genre or something like that. But it is a good way to come up with ideas. Yeah. Absolutely. And when you get those ideas, write them down. Open up your notes yep. memo, your memos or whatever, your notes yep. app and write them down because you will not remember them. My my memory is mashed potatoes sans the gravy lately. So I have to write them down and I'll write like this sound, everything. this idea. I got to write it all. Yep. Because you won't remember and you'll try to make sure to bookmark, save the reel itself or save the video, um, or save the sound, save something. Because if you try to go back and find it, once you're determined to find something, your algorithm's like, ha no, <laughs> find all this other stuff. But good luck finding yes. what you were looking you'll for. Never find that one again. And you'll like type I in like the thing in the hashtags and you're like trying to find it that way. And maybe somebody posted that and you can't find it. You can't I find think it. that's actually what they do to keep you on the platform they do. is is they hide those reels that you know you want to see again yeah. because they know that you'll spend an hour searching for them. And so that keeps you on the platform, which is good for ad spend and stuff. Yep. Right? That's, that's all part of the conspiracy. I'm sure of it. There's little goblins inside that are just like going. Yeah. Hee -hee. yeah 100 percent. They're little goblins. I'm convinced. But um, and you know what I've also heard is that reels get the trends that TikTok was doing two weeks ago. <laughs> And so there's a meme yeah. that says, you know, I'm, you know, I'm an old person. I see the trends when it comes to reels two weeks later. And it's so funny to me because I'm like, oh, that's me. I'm one of those old people now. And this is, I mean, this is a big part of the reason why Instagram has shifted in the first place anyway, right? Because the, the photo thing, they were getting their butts kicked by TikTok. And so they have to do something to adapt. And so rather than innovate in a, in a new and creative way, it's, oh, let's just try to copy what they're doing and see if we can make people stay on the platform. But because so much of the audience has shifted over to TikTok, where it is new and hip and cool or whatever, you're right. Things do end up being a little bit slower over on, on Instagram. And you know what's funny is everybody, there's petitions that were started, even by celebrities, that were saying, yep. hey, we're trying to do sponsored posts and they're not getting the traction that they were. This is affecting yep. us too. So when you see... Yep. You know, people from the, the Kardashians talking about it. it's like, oh, this is like a universal thing. So yep. maybe what have we learned? Copying other people is not a great way to go. Yep. Or, you know, Although, just... I mean, YouTube's doing it now, too. Right. That's why we've shorts. got shorts. Yeah. Yep. So everybody's trying to do the exact same thing. And then but none of them want the same content. Right. Because if you put an Instagram branded thing on TikTok, the algorithm recognizes it. If you mm -hmm. put a. If you put a TikTok branded thing on Instagram, the algorithm recognizes it and vice versa for YouTube shorts or whatever. So they don't want you to duplicate the content, but they all want you to do the exact same kind of content and the exact same thing. Is there a strategy? Do you do you have a strategy across if you're if I know you said you don't use TikTok a lot, but if you do start using TikTok, are you using your reels on TikTok or are you going to create unique content for both platforms? You know, I think it depends on the day. I say 
you try both. You try something new, you see if it works. If it doesn't work, you go, okay. But you can look at if something is trending on TikTok and you know it's not going to come to Instagram until a few weeks later, try it over there. See if it picks yep. up. And then I think there are there are possibly, I have heard, I cannot neither confirm nor deny, that there are apps where you can remove watermarks from your videos and put them up. And I've seen people do that. So that's possibly a way to go. And you can always say, you know, if I post it on TikTok and then two weeks later I post it on Reels, by the time it starts to pick up and gain traction over there, who's going to remember? Yeah. So that's why when people say, what do I post? You can repost something you shared a few months ago because who's going to remember? Don't stress yeah. yourself out, out over it. Repost something you shared six months ago. You may yeah, not people, even remember you already posted yeah, people it. People do not remember. Mm -hmm. no, and that's, I mean, this goes back to what you were talking about earlier with Gary Vee and, and the whole idea of repurposing content, right? Which is definitely one of the things that I've done. Like, I've been creating video content for like 10 years now. I can absolutely go back to videos I created 10 years ago and do them with a slightly new twist or do them, you know, the 2022 version. And so that gives me a way to go back and repurpose content. Something else I've been playing around with is is some of my YouTube content. It might be, you know, five, six, 10 minutes long. Can I create a, a 30 or 60 second version of that for TikTok and maybe try to drive traffic over to YouTube? I don't know if that works yet or not. I'm still experimenting. But there, you go. there are a lot of ways that you can repurpose content and, and get a little bit more traction out of it. And I think that's important for people to remember because I do think that a lot of people create one piece of content that they use one time and assume that that's it. But we also know that on all of these platforms, on a good day, you might get 10% organic reach initially, which means 10% of the audience that wants to see your content is, is seeing it. Only 10%, which means there's definitely some traction for you to do that again in a slightly different way a month from now or six months from now or a year from now, whatever. Absolutely. Even next week, you can, what I was doing when I was going back to strategy, let's say I would post something on LinkedIn on Monday. I'll post it on Twitter on Friday. I'll post it on Instagram on Wednesday instead of cross posting everything at the same time on the same day. Because what if this person doesn't log in at all to any of their apps on Monday? Maybe they have a Monday sabbatical, no platforms at all. Like I don't want to I want to just focus on work. I don't want to open any of my apps. Maybe they miss that post, but you catch them on Wednesday. Maybe you catch them on Friday at a different time when they log into that app. You have more you have a greater chance of your content being seen if you strategize when you post things versus all out at once. And that's Absolutely. also just a giant pet peeve of mine. It's like when I see somebody post something everywhere the same day, it's like, I already saw that. Do something else. It's like just getting punched in the face with this one piece of content over and over again. And it is absolutely not the way to do it. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm curious because you've been strategic about the platforms that you use and you're strategic about how you use those platforms. Are there platforms that you consider I'm willing to connect with anybody here and or this is for connecting with voice actors or this I'm only going to treat professional. I only want to I only want to focus on clients on this. Have you have you split them up that way? Yes, pretty much. I look okay. at I have um, and I think you went through this, too, at one point, because I think we talked about it. Besides our, our baseball rivalry, we've talked about other things. But I think I have had another voice actor connect with me and then they went through my people and added people and that's okay fine but what they did was they went through my people and then connected with somebody I had been trying to work with for a long time and then said no I'll do it for free they came in under uh. bid and you know how I found out was from that client from that person they've become a client since but they said you know this person came in and they offered to do it for free I couldn't turn them down I was like why I what do you mean you couldn't turn them down. You no, no, you could. You chose not to, but mm -hmm. oh, that's dirty. Yeah, that's ah, dirty. And so ever since then, I was like, you know what? Nope, be gone with thee. <laughs> Get out of yeah. here. So that's I'm a little bit more protective with my LinkedIn. If I know if it's yeah. a voice actor, I know personally, 100 percent, because I also like to help do casting and I like to network that way. But I don't make the majority of my LinkedIn other voice actors. 
a lot of it is people that I've either A, worked with and that I have that relationship with, or it's people that I've been trying to work with and I'm reestablishing or rebuilding those relationships and those networks and really cultivating those. And I've, I've been burned before and I had somebody else try that. And it's like, no, 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 no. Fool me once. Fool me yeah. once. But that one yeah. I'm a little bit more selective with. Twitter is yep. kind of open. It's for whoever. I'll post casting calls on there. I'll post different things. And that's that's like a whoever wants to hang out, you can hang out. You know, just be nice. Yep. Um, there's some stuff I that's don't That's asking a share. lot on Twitter, I think, sometimes. I well, listen, there's some stuff I do <laughs> not share on Twitter specifically because of yeah. how people can get. Um, I'll post some of this information on other social media platforms, but not on Twitter. Like I don't. Never if we used to be so angry. I mean, I remember signing up for Twitter when it first became a platform. Yeah. And I was using it actually. the The way that I grew my Twitter initially was I got into a contest. I started a contest, a, a challenge with another announcer at the radio station that I was working at at the time over who could get the most followers on Twitter the fastest. And I actually offered a dollar a follower up to a thousand followers donated to a, a local charity to try to just build my Twitter following the fastest. And I mean, that was back when Twitter was fun and innocent and and sweet and charming. And, and that's the way that the platform worked. And it was a it was a really fun thing. Now I, I go on Twitter to vent about the Red Sox and then mostly just I don't know. I, I avoid it more these days because I, I just don't usually feel good when I get off of it. Yeah, it can. It's one of those places that can really drag you down. You know, I post about, you know, uh, if we're going for authenticity, it's not like I'm shy about it. But on my Instagram and other platforms, I'll post about like celebrating the Jewish holidays. I don't post that on Twitter because if you yeah, <laughs> there are a lot of uh, a lot of people who yeah. don't who don't like Jews on Twitter and um, I'm yeah. it's going around on Instagram right now. So I'm a little bit more selective on that platform yeah. um, just out of fear for my personal safety. But yeah. even living in L.A. still. But on Instagram, it doesn't seem to be as bad over there. So I'll share like, you know, in my stories like, hey, I'm doing Yom Kippur with my sister. Da, da, da. You know, I'll do stuff like that. Or I'll post a uh, Batman Passover memes, which are my favorite. It says the Dark Knight rises, but the matzah doesn't. It's my favorite. Nice. <laughs> I love that it's one so, so on much. Brand. It, so yeah, on brand. So on brand. Exactly. But um, Twitter's for whoever wants to play, and Instagram. I I like to build relationships there because it's fun and it's visual, and you can really you can really build something amazing just by liking somebody's photo or commenting yep. on it. Yep. And then you start talking. In the comments, you start talking in the DMs and then you follow. And, you know, I I know there are I don't really follow somebody until maybe they're following me or it's, you know, celebrities from my my favorite TV show. I follow them and I don't care that they don't follow me back because maybe one day <laughs> they will. Sarah Michelle Geller, maybe one day, maybe, maybe one, one day. day. Maybe, but that's... It's out there now. We've put it out on the podcast. So, I mean, obviously she has to she has to follow through. No, I'm sure she listens every week, so... SMG, come on. I know you have an SMB, <laughs> FM7B in your home. I know. That sounded really creepy out loud. I saw a picture when she was recording voiceover during the Panini. That wasn't me being a creep. Anyways, oh, <laughs> my nerd is showing. Um, but Instagram, I, I'm a little bit more selective about who I follow, but I don't care if people follow me because I don't want to miss... I don't like following too many people because then I'll miss stuff and I don't want to spend all day on it. So if I build that relationship and that rapport with you or if it's somebody I recognize from a class or something like you're cool, I'm going to follow you. You're great. Right. I'm going to follow you. You know, the mute button is great. The unfollow button is great for when people lose their minds. You can just go, you know, I don't want to see this right now. Yeah. Um, and my personal Facebook, it's if I see like somebody with zero friends and they try to request me it's like hey I don't know you but you can like my business page but this is you know I post more of my personal life here but I have yeah. a, a business page that you can follow that I'll post things but mm -hmm. you know I've, I've gotten some weirdos in my Instagram message requests and my my Facebook message requests hey beautiful how are you today I'm like no blah, 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 no I don't know you sir I need an adult leave me alone <laughs> I'm curious then I know we, we touched on this a little bit when, when we were talking about coming up with a plan for how you come up with your content, you, you mentioned that, you know, in the past you've, you've kind of planned it out, you've had a calendar, all that sort of stuff. And I, and I know things are a little bit different right now in the season that you're in, but when you're thinking about your content, how do you come up with it? Is there, 
is it like themes like okay i'm gonna do this stuff is gonna be funny or comedy or this is gonna be superhero or this is going to be voiceover or this is going to be personal or do, do you have like certain themes or buckets maybe that you that you draw from for content ideas or how do you come up with your content that way so i have a couple different ways some of it is you know i look at i try to look at the overall idea of what's on brand for me what is something is is there a movie coming out that's exciting mm-hmm. or whatever like i think when the first wonder woman movie was coming out i shared a drawing of wonder woman that i did when I was maybe three or four years old, that I will say is pretty good. It's pretty good for a child drawing, so says my mom. But I shared that (laughs) and I said, you know, hey, like I've been excited for this movie since I was a little girl. So I kind of look at like what's coming up in the general vicinity. And right now it's October. It's spooky season now that, you know, baseball season is over for me. So <laughs> I'm yeah, still that mad ended about abruptly that. And painfully. Oh, <laughs> telling me I'm still never going to live that down. My cousin is still giving me a lot of garbage for it. But um, but, you know, I look at like spooky season right now. I love Halloween. It's my favorite. It's meaningful for me. So I've been posting more of like fun stuff like that. And that you connect with other people. And they go, I like Halloween. And so I look at what's kind of going on in the world. What's going on in my life? And then there's some days where I go, okay, is this something that is on brand for me? Is this something that's entertaining? That's just pure entertainment. Is it something very personal? I kind of look at that. And there's also, you can Google and people have content calendars and ideas and you can get those and they offer those. Don't you have something like that? I have offered stuff like that in the past, yeah, to try to give people a little nudge to Mm -hmm. start coming up with some content. And because it is, it's one of the things that holds people back, right? Yep. You assume that you have no ideas or your life isn't interesting enough or there's nothing that you can share, nothing that you can talk about. But I don't know. I always find that if you get those first couple posts going, it's like, you know how they say work begets work. I think content begets content. And when you just start getting yourself into the habit of creating, it does become a little bit easier to keep creating. And those tools that that give you ideas, you know, 20 ideas for this, 10 ideas for that, a calendar for this or whatever, those things are really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, as much as it's we say, what was I think I just saw I just saw a tweet from Jamie Lee Curtis, the scream, the scream queen herself. And she said, you're not content creators, you're human beings. I thought that was interesting. And in my head. I was like, that's deep. And then the other part of me went, wait a minute, you have a team of people to help you. Don't give me that. (laughs) Jamie Lee, listen here, ma'am. That's not fair, yeah. <laughs> like, you have a team of people, like, you know, but at the end of the day, that's also true. Like, if it's if you're stressing out about it too much, take a step back. But this is the thing we forget. We have so many interesting stories to tell. But because they're our own stories, we don't always think that they're interesting to other people because yeah. we're so used to them. But then you yep. meet somebody and you tell them something, they go, oh, my gosh, that's so cool. You're a voice actor, da, da, da. Yeah, it's cool. Okay. But when you meet somebody else, they'll think it's maybe the coolest thing they've ever heard. Like being in L.A., if you're an actor, people go, oh, yeah, what restaurant do you work at? (laughs) Like they make that joke. (laughs) (laughs) But when I was in when I was in Raleigh, it was like, oh, that's interesting. Or, you know, I've always wanted to do that. Like, no, no, I work in marketing. Leave me alone. Leave me. I'm an accountant. Leave me alone. Um, you know, <laughs> but our own stories, because we're so used to them. But you could tell a story about something you've been through. And again, it's that connection to other people. And somebody else goes, oh, I've been through that same thing. I went through that same thing, too. Oh, I've been there. That's really cool. I feel the same way. I didn't know there was a name for it. And so we have so many things that we can tell about our stories, about our lives. And we just don't because it's that fear of being seen or that, well, you know, nobody's going to care or it's boring anyways. Who Who's going to pay attention to me? But our day-to-day lives are so interesting. Everybody has a unique story to tell because we're all unique people. And you could just document your day. I know Gary V. Again, if we say his name one more time, he's going to appear like Beetlejuice. Um, which actually would be kind of cool. I would be okay with and that. I have, I'm sure he listens to the podcast every week too. You know, listen, I'll try to put a good word in. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, anytime. <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm trying. But, um, you know, it's, he's even said, just document your, your life. That's your content. Yep. Because maybe, yep. you know, somebody goes and feeds 
parakeets before they go into the booth. That's cool. Or you have dolphins yep. in your backyard. I don't know. I'm just thinking of random exotic animals, maybe because I really want a pet lemur or a pet sea otter. But, you know, it, we have these unique stories and, and we just don't always think about them as being anything worth telling a story about because it's our lives. But you look at every TV show, that's a day in the life of these people and these casts. Yep. One yep. day, one unique day in their story. And that's exactly what it is. It's just storytelling. I think about, uh, I had Stefan Johnson on the podcast and, mm -hmm. and talking about TikTok and, and strategies for TikTok. And one of the things that he said was like, look, everybody's got a unique take, right? Even if it's a subject that a that hundred other people have talked about, you might still bring your hundred and first take is still your unique take. And so there is something that we can all say. There is something that we can all offer. And, and you know, there, I don't know. I just feel like we, we we're missing out on a global audience, potentially global audience, by being controlled from this fear and this fear based narrative that I don't even know. Ex I mean, I don't know exactly where it comes from. But it's costing so much. And so it's nice to have somebody come in and just kind of say, no, you know what? You're interesting. You can do this. Go go do the thing. It, it doesn't have to be super complicated. It doesn't have to be super hard. And not every post is going to be the greatest post ever, right? Yeah. Oh, I've 100%. posted reels that I've posted good reels. I've that posted flop. bad reels. I've posted yep. good YouTube and bad YouTube. Like I, I'm every day is another experiment. And is this one going to work? I don't know, but let me try. Yeah. And, and I guess that's always been more of my mentality than I maybe I, maybe I'm not smart enough to think about the potential downside. I don't know. I just <laughs> I always just think there's got to be more of an upside to just getting out there and doing it. Yeah. It's, it's just one day at a time and then it gets easier. Once you put yourself out there and you share something and maybe it doesn't resonate with people right away. There are reels that I just did sitting in my car and it, she's just going, um, yeah. It says you're a voice actor. When somebody asks, oh, you're a voice actor. Yeah. That one got 50,000 plus views. And it was me because sitting in the so car relatable. moving my sunglasses. And there's other yep. ones that I spent. I'm not kidding you. I spent two hours trying to do one and it had my little sister in it. Hundred likes. I was like, I spent all this editing time. All Do you this think time. that comes back to the genuineness and the authenticity of it, though? Like, that's one of the things that I've always said. I think sometimes it feels like the most successful stuff is the stuff that has the least production value. Because we know that you weren't trying so hard, right? You were just putting it out there. Yeah. Turn the camera on, record, and done. As opposed to those things when you when you do turn the camera on, this take, that take, this screen, that angle, this whatever and it, you know it becomes this fully produced thing and in the midst of that does it lose a little bit of the authenticity mm -hmm. i think it's entirely possible and it's just you know you just do the thing anyways and you just don't care about how it performs just don't overthink it just put it out there if it makes you happy i'm not going to sing the song but if it makes you happy <laughs> so you know disappointed i was waiting for it i know i, like, oh, I know go. oh i could tell i could tell <laughs> i felt it i was like no no it's not karaoke no no but not if even it, like a chorus or nothing. I was like, come on. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I'm not singing for free. Uh, but if, if it's something that makes you happy and it entertains you and you think that, you know, you're having fun, just do it. And it's not hurting anybody. Let me be very clear. It's not hurting anybody. Go for it. Because you never know. Just being goofy, being your unique goofy self could be something that somebody goes, oh, man, she's super cool. I love that yeah. she's got a great voice and she's somebody that I can work with. She seems like somebody really cool to work with who won't be a giant pain in my butt. Yep. I could work with her. Right. She sounds great. And I know there's clients that hire me for that. They're like, you're you're yep. talented and you're cool and you put yep. in good work. Like you're not going to be a pain in my butt. You're not going to be a diva or be rude or whatever. Cool. Hire me for my wonderful personality too. I appreciate that. I think you just brought up a point that we haven't touched on that I think is also really important. And, and that is that, look, if you do have social media, rest assured that there is at least a percentage of your clients that are probably creeping you before they're making a hiring decision. Yes. And so the content that they find on your social media, it could sway them one way or another. And if they see somebody who's fun and quirky or optimistic or happy or seems like somebody that's easy to get along with, that's going to go a lot further to getting you the job than if you're somebody who uses social media to just be angry all the time. Oh my gosh, yes. 
this. <laughs> like, be, you know, and, and think about it. Like, we all have those. <laughs> oh, I might get I might get some garbage for this. And I'm using garbage instead <laughs> of another word. Um, we all have those relatives that you uh, you want to avoid at the family holidays because all they do is rant about things. And you go, oh, yep. I have to go yep. see them now. Okay, they're going to ramble about this. And okay, if I just do 15 minutes, grandma will be happy. I can do it for 15 minutes. That's <laughs> You don't want to be that person exactly. to people who want to hire you. Mm-hmm. You know, if you've got those rants, save them for your close friend's story on your Instagram. Yep. Save it for the people that you know will appreciate it. Create a separate account. Create a little yep. troll account and do it separately and put your rants yep. there. Preferably not yep. that want to exterminate an entire group of people. <laughs> preferably not. Um, yes. I can't stop you, but preferably not. Preferably but, not, yes. Um, but, you know, don't don't be that person. Save that stuff for, you know, you have your free speech, but if you're really trying to do that to get jobs and you're putting that on your public stuff, you're going to make it a lot harder. Because there are probably not that many people who share that same sentiment that are going to be hiring. And you're going to turn a lot of people off. It's a good reminder. Absolutely. Now, if it's something that is near and dear to you, like, I think there is a line, you know. But if it's something that's near and dear to you, but people do absolutely look at socials. They absolutely, agents look, clients look. That's why we see casting calls now and things that say, you know, we need to know what what your Instagram handle is. We need to know what your handle is. We want to see your followers. They're saying that, but they also want to look at your content, too, because if you're posting. Are you an asset or are you a liability? Mm -hmm. Are they going to have to hire? The last thing that they need. How many times have you seen it where somebody that is associated with the brand, just associated, maybe not even actually works for the brand or anything, but associated with the brand that does something stupid. And they don't just cancel the person that did the stupid thing. They got to cancel the brand, too, because of guilt by association. Right? Nobody wants to walk into that on social media anymore. So, yeah, particularly on higher end stuff, you know, higher higher profile stuff. Yeah, you're you're being investigated. You're being checked out. Somebody's looking to make sure that there's not something that's going to come back and bite them in the butt if they make that hiring decision. And there may or may not be a trending hashtag right now asking for people to uh, boycott a specific brand because of somebody saying a bunch of things. May yep. or may not be happening right now as we speak, as on, it's on, happening uh, live. You, you mean today or you mean every day? Because I think that has pretty much just become a standard. You know, that's one of the top 10 tr- uh, trending hashtags on Twitter just about every day now is something yeah. like that. And Yeah. Well, today specifically. you got to be careful now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Today specifically. But um, yeah, it's just be cool. Be your lovely, unique self. Make a good first impression and then make a good second impression. Make a good third impression. You know, I have thoughts that I reserve for specific people and things and you know I'm very authentic and there's a few things where it's like hey this is maybe a little too personal this isn't something I feel like sharing so I'm not going to broadcast it to the world you know and that's okay too you don't have to share everything but be somebody people want to work with yep be somebody people want to work with because the internet is forever I think that's where this ends I think that's like literally that is like the best way to wrap this is just that reminder Like for all the other social media strategy, and we covered a lot of ground here. There's a lot of great advice that you've given in here, but it all comes back down to that. Be be somebody that people want to work with and remember that the internet lasts forever. (laughs) That is a good reminder. It is a good reminder. Just One day the Boston Red Sox are going to come calling and I'm going to lose the job because of angry things that I've said in the midst of the season. (laughs) And they're not going to be able to forgive me for it. And so that's when I remind myself, before you post this other one, the internet lasts forever. You did the same thing with the Dodgers, didn't you? Tell the truth. (laughs) Maybe. You know, it's not too late to be a Dodgers fan. I'm just saying. It's not too late. Okay. We got to do this because this episode is going to air after the World Series will be done. Ooh, okay. So it's it's Houston Mm -hmm. and the Phillies. (laughs) Houston and the Phillies. Who who's your pick? Who are you predicting? Anybody but Houston, so go Phillies. And I'm still holding that grudge. I absolutely am. If Houston called me, I'm sorry. I can't do it. I'm still upset about I'm still upset. I'm still upset. I have very strong I have very strong feelings about Houston. 
I was very happy to watch them eliminate the Yankees. I'm not gonna lie. I was I was an Astros fan on the on the fringe for that that series, but I feel like I feel like it's Philly's turn this year. I, I would I feel be okay like it's with Philly's that. Turn. Yeah, yeah, I'd so be okay I, with that. So that uh, that's my prediction. We'll find out. Like I said, this episode is going to air after the World Series is done. So uh, my prediction is, is that, yeah, the Phillies are, this is the year. This is the year. Bonnie, this has been absolutely fantastic. Now, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, maybe dive into this a little bit more, uh, get to know you a little bit better in your, your superhero brand, how do we find you? How do we connect with you online? So I've spent years, this is a great question, I have spent years cultivating this brand. If you Google voiceover superhero, you will find me. That's what I tell people when I don't have a card with me because I just moved back across the country and I can't find some things. So I said, hey, you know what? If you Google it, you'll find me. You can figure out, pick whichever platform you want to connect with me on, but you'll find me if you Google that. But the easiest way, vosuperhero.com. That's V-O as in voiceover, not B-O as in body odor. I have to say that sometimes. I, I sense there's a story in there somewhere. <laughs> Obviously, somebody's got that mixed up at some point in time. But yes, where I'm like, really, the body or something? Yeah, but if you Google VO, if you just voiceover superhero, it's really easy to find me. I have that pretty much on every single social media platform or VO superhero. If it didn't give me enough characters, but that's the best way to find me um, and connect okay. with me. I'd love to. If somebody says, I don't know what to do or I need help, like I, I can take a look at it and go, here's what you're doing wrong. I'm great at motivating. If you give me your story, I'll say, talk about that. Talk about that. Right on. That's cool. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. We will, uh, I'll make sure that the platforms and websites and whatnot go into the uh, show notes on this one. So you'll be able to look it up and, and find uh, everything that Bonnie has mentioned, all the, the, the platforms, the website and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, and then we'll find out in a few weeks whether or not the Phillies actually win the World Series. Boo Astros. <laughs> I know that's not very sportsmanlike of me, but, you know, no, it's fine. But but, uh, but I feel that, too. I, I feel that, too. Yeah. Bonnie, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for your, your time and, and for your wisdom, and thank you for your authenticity and your transparency, which I hope that that's an inspiration to everybody that's listening to, to bring a little bit of that forward on their social media platforms as well, because I think that that is what people really like to connect with. Yeah, thank you for having me and, and allowing me to be able to talk about that on a really broad scale platform and to be able to share that with people and to do it in a way where it's not just text, but it's we're having a conversation and we can share that yeah. and it you can hear and you can see and it, it it's just so nice to be able to connect. So thank you for allowing me the space and the time to share that and for having me on. I really appreciate it. Social media doesn't have to be a scary place. It can actually be a really fun place where you can meet a lot of really great people and develop some really great relationships. And not only relationships that will ultimately lead to voiceover opportunities, but relationships that become friendships that can last for a lifetime. So I hope that you're feeling inspired and encouraged and motivated to give social media a try after this episode. And I'm so grateful to Bonnie for everything that she shared. If you're listening and you're ready to start posting, by the way, why don't you do us a favor? Share something on Instagram and tag me and Bonnie as well. I'm at Mark Scott and Bonnie is at voiceover superhero. So make sure you tag both of us. I'll put those in the show notes as well. We would love to see what you come up with. I also want to take a minute to thank our sponsor for this episode. This coming February 2023, take a trip to the heart of the Caribbean to learn about the business of the voiceover business. To find out more about Vocation Cancun, Visit vocationconference.com when you register for the event. Make sure you let them know you heard about it on the Everyday Vopreneur podcast. Details again at vocationconference.com. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll catch you on the next one. The Everyday Vopreneur podcast. Available everywhere fine podcasts are given away for free. Mostly, we think. Having your voiceover demos easily playable and downloadable on your website is essential. The Voice Sam Player lets you do that across any device and browser. There are also options for adding play buttons in your email signature, tracking your listens, and even putting videos in your demo player. Sign up now at voicesam.com slash markscott and receive an instant $25 credit. For full details and to claim this offer, visit voicesam.com slash markscott. And see. And that's a wrap. Thanks for hanging in. Thanks for hanging out. Want more Vopreneur goodness? Jump online at vopreneur.com.